Hey guys, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company. I want to show you a short video of what I did over the weekend. I put some shiplap up in a bathroom and I'm going to show you some of the things that I did to get it to fit in there and some things you can expect to see if you try to do it yourself and want to put some of that sweat equity into your bathroom. So let me show you. So like I said, this was a small project I did over the weekend. Um, uh, somebody wanted me to help them put some shiplap up into the bathroom, so of course I said I would do it. And um, it was a fun project. It's not too long. It took about an afternoon. I did do a little bit of prep work. So ahead of time, I did paint the shiplap so that I didn't have to do any major painting once it was up. If you've ever done shiplap or ever done anything in a room and you install it and then have to paint it afterwards, you know it's a pain in the butt. So I went ahead and I painted the material ahead of time. And that way when I did finish installing, all I had to do was maybe come back and do a little bit of touch up. So I brought that paint with me and when I was all finished, I could touch it up. But let me show you guys first what the bathroom looked like. It was a bare wall. It was about 35 inches wide and um, nine to 10 foot ceilings. The first thing was removing the baseboard. So as you can see here, I have the tools in place already. I started to remove the baseboard. I used a little pry bar and I used this wide putty knife to help me kind of pry it off the wall without causing too much damage. I made sure I kept a couple pieces big enough that I could use and then I would put them on the chop saw. I would actually cut a nice clean piece from that uh, old baseboard and then I would use the old baseboard profile to actually trace onto the side of my new baseboard. That way I could trim it down and actually have it fit nice and tight up against the existing baseboard inside the bathroom. Here I used a grinder to help grind away the material. It took a little bit of work, but another method you could do is use this jigsaw. It'll actually help cut away most of the material ahead of time. Then you can just go back in with the grinder and help get a little bit closer to those trace lines. Either way is good. Using the jigsaw first just sped up the process, but the grinder is always a good option. As you can see, the baseboard fits nice and tight so that when I go to place it behind the toilet and it actually fits up against the walls that are perpendicular, it'll fit nice and tight and I don't have to use that much caulking to fill the gap. Here you can see I placed the baseboard in, I'm doing a little bit of test fitting, looks pretty good so far. I did have to make a seam behind the toilet because you can't fit that uh, 35 inch piece of baseboard all the way behind the toilet without actually removing the toilet first. So the next step was to actually put the first piece in and we also have that water line to worry about. So you can't really remove the whole water line and be able to punch a hole through the face of a shiplap and actually fit the whole board over because it would take a lot more extra work and it's not really necessary. What I did is I measured up, it's about four, four and a half inches, and I made sure that the center of the water line met at my first seam between the first two pieces. What that allowed me to do was actually cut half a circle out and then fit that board up, up to the uh, water line. And then I took the second piece and cut the other half of the circle and then that actually just sandwiched around the water line, made it a lot easier. I didn't have to take apart any water lines and it still looks good because the first piece is about four, four and a half inches. So it, it looks nice and even all the way up the wall after that. The next step after that was just continuing that process all the way up behind the toilet and all the way up to the ceiling. The wall was actually very even, which kind of surprised me because if you've ever tried to install something in the house, you know the walls are never that even, but it was pretty square all the way up. It's about 34 and three quarters all the way and that left me about an eighth of an inch to kind of play with on either side. So I went 35 inches every couple pieces, always making sure that I was checking for level. That's one thing in this project when you're doing shiplap, because you have a lot of straight lines, you wanna make sure that your first couple pieces are very square because everything else is gonna sit off that. So I always check for square every few pieces. If you have to make a slight adjustment, you can usually do it about a 16th of an inch without really noticing it with your eye. So luckily I didn't have to do that, but it is an option, but always use the level, especially when you're working with long lines or long walls, your eye's gonna catch it if it's off. After that, I came back in with some trim. I always like to finish my shiplap off with a little bit of trim. It creates a nice framed look and it cleans up the edges and also it hides all the nail holes. So it's one way to clean it up, especially if your walls have a little bit of wave to them. It'll actually make the shiplap look like it's nice and tight all the way around and your eye won't catch any gaps. But my, my favorite part is that it actually hides all the nail holes. So after all the trim was installed, I went back and I just filled the few nail holes that I used to actually secure the trim 
And then I went back with some uh, brilliant white caulking to make sure that the gaps around the baseboard where the new baseboard met the old baseboard were filled. You can just do a nice little light bead and then you can run your finger through it and it will fill up nice and it cleans it up really well. And now you get to step back and enjoy the view. And that's it guys. So I hope you liked the project. Um, it was something I did really quick over the weekend. It was fun. Um, an accent wall is always something nice to add into a room or in this case a bathroom. It took a couple hours worth of work, maybe a little bit of prep work, but something you might wanna try yourself. Hopefully I showed you guys a couple things that make you comfortable about trying it. There are some things to pay attention to and, and to look out for. One is being able to put that solid piece of baseboard behind the toilet. Probably not gonna work unless you actually remove the toilet, so you're gonna have to put a seam there. Make sure the seam is behind the toilet so you can't see it. Um, it's just something that you have to do. The other thing is where is that water line at? Make sure that you line up your first two pieces or your first, second, or third piece so that the seam lands on that water line and it makes it a lot easier to make two little special cuts rather than trying to figure out how to work around the water line and the water valve. The other thing is that method that I use to um, get the baseboard to actually fit nice and tight to the old baseboard. It's just one way to do it, but I like doing it that way. It only took a couple minutes, and um, I actually did it on my first try. It's just because I gave myself enough room. We always say measure twice, cut once. Well, I like to measure three or four times and cut once. So always give yourself a little bit of room in case you have to trim it or maybe cut in a little bit more. Just a little bit of advice. Hope you guys liked the video. Again, I'm gonna be trying to make more of these things of the projects I'm building. I'm doing all kinds of stuff like this all the time. If you have any questions, message me. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that like button. Let's go build stuff.